All over Ireland, entrepreneurs are building businesses and creating winning opportunities, both for their teams and the communities in which they live. It's been a long while since I togged out in a dressing room like this, playing hurling with the local junior team. We had some crack, some friendships, just like the next two entrepreneurs I'm going to meet. Jimmy Martin and Austin Ryan have been in business together since 2004. Their enterprise, AMCS Group, designs software for the recycling and waste management industry. With landfill becoming scarce and expensive, waste has never been more valuable. And AMCS is cleaning up. Their technology services 10 million bins worldwide. Come here, lads. Did the two of you meet in a hurling pitch? Is that a true story? It is a true story, yeah. It is indeed, Parik, yeah. Jimmy is a tip man, moved into the area. He joined Ballybricken and we hurled together for a few years. So you taught Jimmy the Tipperary man how to hurl? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy came to me with uh, an idea that he had about using the RFID technology for tracking cattle. But I suppose to cut a long story short, it didn't really go anywhere. And at that time, landfill was becoming very expensive and a scarce commodity. So it was vital for all waste operators and municipalities to measure every bit of material that was going into the back of a bin lorry. It is a typical software system on um, a bin truck in Ireland. Um, it consists of the weighing system, which weighs the bin, an onboard computer system for tracking and routing the truck, and it's in continuous communication with the back office on a real-time basis. As you can see, this bin is, um, belongs to Mr. Kevin Ryan. Um, we're just going to collect that now. Um, as that's going up, it's validating it. You can see the bin has now stopped. It won't let me go any further. So the computer tells the driver that there's a problem with this bin. Just as we were doing that in that split second, it's checked. It's the right bin for that round, that right material type. And if there's anything wrong with that, it'll disable the lift. At their call centre and R&D headquarters in Limerick, AMCS employ 50 people. And a further 80 jobs have been created in foreign markets. We started in 2004, yet by 2006, we were firmly focused and embedded in the UK market. The international growth is key, like the overall waste recycling industry is going to double over the next 10 years. They reckon it's worth about 10 trillion. For us, it's about scaling that, you know, getting into the right territories. And, and you know, I'd see US is a big growth market for us. Before leaving Ballybricken, I set the lads one last goal to achieve. Oh! <laughs> Our next entrepreneur is also from the Midwest. He has nourished an agribusiness from the grassroots up. In 2002, Liam Wolf and some like-minded investors founded the Fresh Grass Group and then bought grassland fertilizers from Greencore. With three factories, they now claim a 25% share of the Irish fertilizer market. So Liam, what's the manufacturing process here? We basically source all our raw materials abroad. It comes uh, generally by shipload. We blend the products to match a cocktail of whatever the farmer wants, like 18612, which is 18% nitrogen, 6% phosphate, and 12% potash. All our material is sold directly to the merchant trade, who in turn filter it onto the farmers. So we rarely have a truck leaving any of our factories that is not full. Four years ago, Fresh Grass bought another company from Greencore, Drummond's Agri in County Meath. The company was in trouble, threatened with closure, and all the jobs were at risk. Cheapers, uh, my first reaction was, should I can't have me. Yeah. There must be a business there, and why was there a business there three years ago, and there isn't there one now? And farming is always going to exist, and there's always going to be farming in County Louth and County Meath and that whole region, and uh, that business uh, is predominantly in the grain and the service and the arable sector. In 2012, Freshgrass expanded further by entering a joint venture with Group Roulier, a global giant in the agribusiness. This gave Freshgrass the opportunity to access Roulier's impressive R&D and the opportunity to pass this innovation onto Irish farmers. That to me is the greatest game changer I have done so far, even though the ordinary man cannot see it for a while because of the science and the projects that are going on in the background are mind boggling. We must bring to farmers products that are going to add value to current uh, practices they have, and, and that means we have to be different. Liam is certainly passionate about the agribusiness, but he also has a passion for community. He was instrumental in the fundraising and building of a daycare centre for the elderly in Newcastle West. 
The objective is to provide a centre for people to come in on a daily basis to have a cup of tea, a bit of camaraderie. It means an awful lot to people who are somewhat isolated because of circumstances. When I think about that organisation, I think about an organisation that puts a little bit of light in people's lives. Leaving on a high note, I move north to meet our next entrepreneur. A man whose thriving business is built on solid foundations in Toombridge, County Antrim. Seamus McCaig was a qualified engineer in the early 80s when his father asked him to join the family enterprise. At that time, Cray Concrete was a modest block-making business. But over the following 25 years, Seamus and his brothers built it into one of the largest precast concrete manufacturers in the UK and Ireland. But when the construction industry collapsed in 2008, it hit Crea hard. With over 500 jobs on the line, tough decisions had to be made. You see, whenever you have to lay off 300 people, you don't sleep in your bed at night. You, you worry about it. The temptation was to draw really into yourself and blame the whole world and blame everybody. You know, my mother used to say when things go wrong, stop feeling sorry for yourself, get up and get on with it. So Seamus, what is it that gets you through a recession? You have to make a product that there's a market for. There's no point of playing in a game where there's no game going on. So we stuck very close to the hollow core and to the structural precast because we had developed relationships there. And then we took on more risk with the jobs, not just supply it, we installed it, we done the in situ works, we became more of a contractor. And we differentiated ourselves from the other competitors because we became literally a partner of choice. I'm a better person. I'm a much better person for having come through that experience. How many employees do you have now? We're higher than pre-recession times. We had 532 at the peak. We went down to 230. We're back up to 550. Crea Concrete is thriving, but Seamus, ever an entrepreneur, continues to seek out new opportunities in the marketplace. He has recently developed an insulated concrete flooring product for use in homes. This is a product for the housing floor market in England. And we think we can grow a big share of a large market with this product because we're ahead of the game. It's a growing market. It's a big market. So and are you the first to come up with this we're product? We're the very first people in the, in the UK and Ireland with this product. There are similar products, but this is, this is very bespoke to us. Are some of your family involved in the business now? I have uh, two sons and a daughter in the business. There's a mother and three daughters working that office in there and they've been, there, they've been there 25 years and more. So there's lots of family connections right around the whole company. And those are the people you really, really depend on. I know they're easy things to say. You see, when you're in trouble, them's the people that cling to you. Absolutely. Them's the people that hang you on. Them's the people that give you the punch to say, come on, you can do this. So what do you think? Think I have it? Well, this character, Roy, you can see him there. This guy is a big part in the success story of our next entrepreneur. Kerryman John Rice drew on his experience as an animator with 20th Century Fox when his entrepreneurial instincts itched. In 2002, he returned home from the US and set up Jam Media with two friends. The animation company's main production studio is in Dublin, but they have recently set up a second studio in Belfast. Here, staff work on Roy, a BAFTA award-winning children's series. <laughs> Making Roy appear believable in his environment, that's what's done here in Belfast. You'll see here first, Porek, that Roy isn't in the shot, so what we're doing here is we're going to put Roy into the back of the car. Rough animation first. Now you can see Roy has been fully animated up and uh, is in the back of the car. I see him there banging the spoon. Banging the spoon, yes, he thinks it's a horse. Hello? Roy is uh, just over 9 million euro production. And it's hugely popular now. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's selling all around the world. We've been recommissioned for a double series from the BBC. It's on RTE. Very big in Scandinavia, of all places, and uh, Australia. So it's doing, it's doing very well. It sells very well. The BAFTA Award, that's a highlight in anyone's career. Oh God, yeah, yeah. We've been, we've been tapping on that door for a while. Previously, we'd been nominated twice for Roy oh, yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, so third time lucky. Tell me about your move here to Belfast. Prior to this, we'd always farmed out um, this part of the production to the likes of Canada. And just rather, instead of sending it off to Canada, we looked into the kind of the supports available here and we looked at the talent base here and it was a no-brainer, really. <laughs> Pick Me was our first ever series. It allows for this personalization, so kids to star in their own cartoon series, really. So we've got this app out now to, to connect with it. Very 
very nice little boy. That's some child. <laughs> <laughs> so our development slate is, is very strong at the moment. Last year we delivered like three major series to the BBC and RTE. Next year we'll see, we'll see four or five. Eight nominees. Eight inspirational examples that the Irish economy is alive and kicking. I think it's probably the strongest uh, industry category we've had. I think most of them have the potential to go international. Maybe haven't gone there yet, but I do think they're the backbone of our economy. What we have different to many other years in the industry category is businesses that are really, really big in size and they're huge employers. If you're one of those companies in every town in Ireland, oh, just think of fantastic. just think of what you'd have. Yeah. The debate will go on for quite a while yet, but they will not leave tonight until we have decided who's going to be the industry EY Entrepreneur of the Year for 2013. Next week, I complete my journey around the country as I meet the nominees in the international category of the 2013 EY Entrepreneur of the Year. <laughs>